Remember that each element within a universal set can only appear once within a Venn diagram. If we have disjoint sets, that means no element within this subset is also going to appear within this subset. They are disjoint. If we have non-disjoint sets, there is an intersection where the elements common to this set as well as this set will appear within this intersecting region on the Venn diagram. As each element in the universal set can only appear once, this intersection region is where we place all elements belonging to both A and B. As this entire oval represents subset B, this section here represents the elements within subset B that are not including elements in A. Similarly, this oval on the left represents set A. So this section here represents A only, all elements in A but not in B. And then the complement, so everything within the universal set that is not included in sets A or B is going to be outside here. So it's part of the universal set, it's not in set A or set B. Within each diagram we can either list all elements within each set or we can write the number of elements that occur within each set. So depending on what the question's asking, you're either going to list the elements, separating each element with a comma, or you're just going to give what is the number of elements within that region. Now in terms of the notation, there's two really important symbols that we have to note. The intersection symbol and the union symbol. The intersection is referring to all elements common to two or more sets. So for example, the intersection of A and B is this middle region on the Venn diagram. So this is the region where we list all elements that are part of both set A and B. So when we think of the intersection, we can think of the slap chop. And if you've never seen one in action, you can Google the commercial. But it's this little device with blades, so it comes down and it chops out that middle section. So that's the elements common to both A and B. And then the union symbol, so think it looks like U for union, I think of this as a bowl. So it's like a bowl that contains all of these sections. So all of the elements in A only, or A and B, or B only. So all of the elements in A or B is going to be contained within that shaded region of the diagram. Remembering that this entire circle here represents all elements in A, if I just take a look at the shaded region, that is A but not B, or we would read that A minus B, so that backward slash is minus. Likewise, this entire B circle represents all elements in B. If I just include this shaded region, that is B but not A, or B minus A. Okay, so if we are given a list of elements in set A and a list of elements in set B, and we're going to organize them first of all into a Venn diagram, check to see do we have any elements in common to each of those sets. And we can see that both contain a three, and we can only write each element one time. Time. So that three we're going to record in the intersection piece of the diagram that belongs to both set A and set B. I also see that A contains one and two, so those are going to go into my A only region, and my B only will contain elements four and five. So using our set notation symbols, three is an element common to A and B. Within the union of A or B, we have the elements one, two, three, four, five. So just think this is like the bowl contains all elements within those regions. A only, or B only, or A and B both. And we're not thinking of or in terms of either or, we're thinking of or as in A only, or B only, or both. Or is all elements within that union of A and B. Now, if we have three elements within set A, and three elements within set B, how many elements do we have in A or B? The answer is not six, as you can see, within the union of A and B, we have only five elements. How come? Well, we can see that this particular element belongs to A and B, but we're only counting at one time. So in general, the number of elements in A or B is equal to the number of elements in A. So in our A circle, remember we have three elements in total. So there are three elements within A, 
plus the number of elements we have in set B. And again, B is that entire oval. We can see that we have three elements within B. And then we're going to remove one of those intersection pieces because we only want to count each element one time. So because we already counted it as part of one set, we're gonna remove that. Three plus three is six, minus one gives us five, which is the number of elements in A or B. So the number of elements in those regions. In our first example, we're given some information about sets and we're asked to display that information into a Venn diagram using the actual elements. So we're going to list each element as opposed to giving the number of elements within each of those sets. Okay, so we're gonna begin with our universal set. We're using a U for universal set, so we can go ahead and fill that in up here. And we are told that our universal set contains all natural numbers from one to 20. So we know natural numbers are the counting numbers, so our positive whole numbers beginning with one, two, three, etc. So we can go ahead and list those out. And I know that there's going to be 20 of them. So we can go down here and put down the number of elements within our universal set is going to be 20. We're then given two subsets. One of them is going to be subset E, so we can go ahead and write E in one of the ovals. The other one is going to be subset F. E is all even numbers from one to 20. So again, we can go ahead and list those. So two, four, six, eight, 10, et cetera and f is gonna be factors of 20. Now remember, a factor is a number times another number that will get us back to 20. So what are the numbers that will divide evenly into 20 with no remainder? So if we go in order, we have one times 20 is 20, two times 10, three does not divide evenly into 20, four times five, and if you go in order, we can see how we loop back around here, so we have all of the factors. The next thing we're gonna do is take a look at our two subsets, and we're going to identify if we have any elements in common. So we're gonna go along here, and we're gonna circle them, so we can see that we have a two in each of those subsets, we have a four in each of those subsets, and we also have a 10 and 20. So there are four elements that are common, those are going to go into the intersection piece and we're listing the elements. So we have two, four, 10, 20. And then I have to also write down within set E are all of these other numbers that are not currently circled. So we're going to have here, we have a six, eight, 12, 14, 16, 18. And then within F, so F only or F minus E, again, we're going to include everything that is not currently circled. So we have a one and a five. And then just double check. We need 20 elements within this diagram. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're missing eight. So again, the universal set is the natural numbers from one to 20. So let's go through these. Anything that's not currently written in those subsets is going to be part of the complement. Okay, so we have one and we have two. We are missing three, so we can go down here and fill in a three. We have four and five and six. We are missing the number seven, so let's go down here and fill that out. We have eight, we are missing number nine. We have 10 because that's even. We are missing 11, so we can go down here and fill that in. We have 12, we are missing 13. We have 14, we are missing 15. We have 16, we are missing 17, we have 18, but not 19, and we have 20. So now if you go through and count, we should have all natural numbers between one and 20, and we should have 20 elements within that Venn diagram. And a quick way to do this, if we know that within set E contains all even numbers, then within set F, those are the factors of 20, F only contains the odd factors. So every odd number that is not already within here is going to be part of that complement. In our next example, let's say we have a class of 30 students. If I survey the students and find out that 15 students drive a car or a vehicle, I find out that nine students play a sport and there are six students who do both. They drive a vehicle and they play a sport. We are asked to answer these questions. Now, before we answer any questions, even though the question does not say create a Venn diagram, we know we have to create a Venn diagram. So there are 30 students within my universal set. If possible, 
always begin in the middle. So I can see that because we do have students who both drive and play a sport, there is going to be some intersection piece there. Those six students are going to go in the middle. Now, I would encourage you to pause the video and see if you could fill out the remainder of the diagram to see if your values match mine. If not, that's okay. You're going to learn and then you'll be able to correct your errors. So pause the video now and then come back. Welcome back. All right, now here's where some people get tripped up. So I want you to be really careful with this. We know there are 15 students who drive a vehicle. Within this entire drive a vehicle circle, I need to have 15 students. I already have six students in that circle. So I'm gonna go 15 minus the six who are already in there. And that means there are nine students who drive a vehicle but don't play a sport. Likewise, within this play a sport circle, I know that there are going to be nine students. I already have six in there, which means there are three students who only play a sport but do not drive a vehicle. Now, if I add this up, I've got nine plus six is 15 plus three is 18. We have 30 students in the universal set. So 30 minus those 18 means there are 12 students in the complement who do not drive a vehicle or play a sport. So now quickly check. 9 plus 6 plus 3 plus 12, does that accurately add up to the number we should have in the universal set? And now once we have that diagram filled out, we can go ahead and answer these questions. So the first one we're asked to give the number of elements in D but not P. So again, this is my D circle. If I want D only, I'm not including anything in the P circle. I'm just going to take that number 9. That's the number of elements in D but not P the number of elements in P but not D. So again, this is my P circle. I'm not including anything within the D circle. So we're looking at P only, which is going to be three students within that section. The number of elements in P or D. So think that's the bowl that contains all of these. So I'm gonna add up nine plus six plus three, and that's going to give 18 students that either play a sport or drive a vehicle. So drive only or play a sport only or do both. And then here we have that little prime. So remember, every time we see that prime, we're gonna say not. So the number of elements or the number of students who do not play a sport or drive a vehicle. So outside of that bowl that contains everything is the complement. So the number within that complement is going to be 12. I pulled a question from your textbook just to show you this is what a typical question will look like. It is not going to say draw a Venn diagram first, but you know in order to organize the information, we are always going to be drawing a Venn diagram. So we're going to start with our rectangle to represent the universal set. And in this particular case, we are surveying 80 people. So that's the number in our universal set. So let's go ahead and put a U up here. And we know the number in that universal set is going to be 80. Now, the next thing we have to decide, are there going to be disjoint circles or are there going to be intersecting circles? So we're told that nine people do not like either flavor. Okay, so if they do not like either flavor, that's their complement. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the nine down here. 11 people like both. Okay, so right there. If they like both, then we are going to have intersecting circles or non-disjoint circles. So let's go ahead and fill that in. And then we're going to label them one vanilla, one chocolate. Choose letters that are going to make sense to you when you go to analyze this. Now, 11 people like both, so if they like both, we're gonna put them into that middle section. We're then told 20 people like only vanilla. So this section here is vanilla only. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those 20 in there. So I can see there are 31 people who like vanilla, 11 also like chocolate, 20 like only vanilla. Now we have to figure out how many people like only chocolate. Now we do have to pay attention to the directing words or the verbs. So determine right here, that means we need to show how we're getting that value. So we're gonna go over to the side here and we know there are 80 people in the universal set. If we remove the complement, there are 71 people that have to like either chocolate or vanilla that are gonna be in that middle section. I can see that 20 plus 11, that's the number of people who like vanilla ice cream. So if I take my 71 people who like either vanilla or chocolate, remove the number of people who like vanilla, and that's going to leave me with the number of people who like chocolate only. So I can fill in 40 here, and then we're going to check. If we add up 20 plus 40 is 60, plus 11 is 71, plus nine, 
Each number within that rectangle added together needs to give us the number in the universal set. It does, so our Venn diagram works. So now we can answer the question, how many people like only chocolate? This section here represents the number of people who like only chocolate ice cream. So there are 40 people within that section who like only chocolate ice cream.